Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Apex Academy. I'm David Liu, your loyal host and teacher, and I am very excited right now because this module is going to be a good one. We're going to be writing our very first triggers and demystify what you may have considered magic up until this point. Today, you are the magician. I'm going to give you a fair warning right now. There is going to be a lot of code in this module. My intention is not to glaze over concepts, but to give you a thorough understanding of how code works by showing you different triggers from different angles. Plus, I want to make sure you get your money's worth. The more triggers you read and write, the more you're going to start recognizing the patterns in code. We'll be talking about that more in this module. For now, Grab a cup of your favorite caffeinated drink and let's get started coding. Here's an overview of what we'll be talking about during this module. First, we're going to write the simplest of triggers and I'm going to explain to you how it works. Next, I'll teach you about a fundamental pattern used in every trigger known as the trigger loop. We'll write another slightly more involved trigger then I'll help answer what is perhaps the most Googled trigger question of all time. When do we use before versus after triggers? Finally, we'll reinforce and demonstrate everything we learned by writing one more trigger. Let's write the very first of what I hope to be many triggers in your career. We're going to start off with a classic Hello World trigger. If you didn't already know, the Hello World tutorial is a time-honored tradition for every coding tutorial in every coding language ever made. And it's pretty much the most basic code one can write. In this particular demo, we're going to populate fields whenever a lead is updated. The lead's first name will be Hello, and the lead's last name will be World. I highly recommend at this point to code alongside me in your own Salesforce developer environment. This will help you get over any fear of coding and it helps build some much needed muscle memory. Okay, here I am in a fresh new Salesforce development environment. I'm going to write this trigger through Salesforce setup since that's the quickest way to get started. To get to the trigger editor, go to setup Customize, Leads, Triggers, New. This here is your canvas and your mind is the paintbrush. Let's make art. Once you're here, follow along in your own developer org and type exactly what I'm typing letter for letter. It's common for new programmers to forget to use quotes and semicolons, so make sure you have them there. When you're done, hit the quick save button and your trigger should save with no detected errors. We can immediately see if our trigger works by simply updating an existing lead. Voila! Once we save, we see that the lead's first and last name are updated appropriately. Since our trigger only runs when leads are updated, if I create a new lead, the logic in our trigger will not fire. Now let me go through this trigger line by line and explain what's going on. The first line in this trigger describes its name, what event fires this trigger, and what object it's running on. Coding editors usually pre-populate this line for you, except for its three inputs. The first input is the trigger's name. Salesforce expects a name that includes no spaces. To make up for the lack of spaces, we use what's called camel case. Camel case simply capitalizes the first letter of each word to help make it more readable. You'll see camel case used often in many different programming languages. The next input is the object. The object we type here tells Salesforce that it should fire our trigger whenever events happen on this object. Now events are our third input. Here we type a comma separated list of events that will fire our trigger. 
we covered the three main types of events in the past module. Insert, update, and delete. The before tells Salesforce to run this trigger right before a lead is updated. We'll go into that in more detail shortly. So to summarize the first line, we're creating a trigger named Hello World and it fires before a lead is updated. Moving on to the second line, we have what I call the trigger loop. This has its own name because every trigger you will ever write will have a loop just like this. In a nutshell, multiple records can enter a trigger at once. For example, multiple leads could be updated in bulk. This trigger loop repeats all the code inside its brackets for each possible record. Each lead in this loop is temporarily assigned to a variable we're going to name L. Trigger.new is the list of all leads in this trigger. We'll also go into this in more detail soon. For now, just know that this line roughly reads, loop through all leads in trigger new, which is the list of all records entering this trigger, and for each record we're iterating through, temporarily assign it to the variable L. Now finally onto the part of the trigger that actually matters. Line three and four basically contain all of the logic of this trigger. The rest of the lines are known as boilerplate code, code that's just kind of there taking up space. In lines three and four, we're setting fields on the lead using a format that may be familiar to you. Just as we would with formula fields, we can access the fields of a record using dots. Remember, L is the variable we're assigning to the current lead in our trigger loop. So we're setting L.firstName to hello, then we're setting L.lastName to world. And we repeat this for every lead in our trigger. Let's take a moment now to talk about syntax. What the heck are we doing with all of these indents, brackets, spaces, and semicolons? Let's first talk about brackets and indentations. Open and close brackets are used to surround blocks of code that are running inside of its scope. For example, our trigger loop is running inside the scope of our trigger. Our main trigger logic is running inside the scope of our loop. These blocks of code are indented inside the brackets to show which scope they belong to. Your code scope is important because it defines the context your code is running in. Again, our main trigger logic in lines three and four is running inside the scope of our trigger loop. So our trigger loop basically owns these lines of code and defines when and how they are run. In this case, the lines of code are repeated for every record in our loop. Taking one more step out, our trigger loop is running inside the context of our overall trigger. Our trigger defines when this code is run, and in this case, it's whenever a lead is updated. It is not mandatory to have your blocks of code indented within its scope, but it's something every programmer does to make sure their code is easily read. Keep your code clean and make sure to use proper indenting. You're gonna confuse yourself otherwise. One more note about scope. For every open bracket, there must be a closing bracket. So if you did your indentations properly, all your blocks of code should line up neatly just like this. I'm personally fanatic about keeping my code clean. And if you ever code for a big company like Google, literally every space must be perfect. So start good habits early. The next thing I want to talk about is spaces. Salesforce is flexible with their use of spaces, just as they are flexible with their use of indentations. Whether you use a single space or a hundred spaces in a row, Salesforce treats them both the same way.